So at this point, um, I've applied my lip stain, I've applied my lashes, I've done just about everything I need to. Um, my final step, which I'm not going to do because I am not going on stage and I am not leaving this on forever, um, would probably be to use a setting spray. Um, so I really recommend getting some kind of a good spreading setting spray if you are in a show. Um, and you have to do a lot of makeup for it just because it's really going to be like that final um, security on your makeup. So um, some people will sometimes ask like, well, if I use like a setting spray, do I not have to use powder? Um, if you are using any kind of like cream product on your face and it does not dry on its own, you definitely need to use powder. Um, if I had to choose one, like we're desert islanding it right now, right? Um, I would always go with powder. Powder is going to keep your makeup on. Um, it's just that setting spray is just it's kind of like hairspray right like you've already styled your hair but it's just that sort of like last bit of security uh, me personally I like aerosol ones just because um, sometimes I think the ones that are just in spray bottles um, the nozzles sometimes get clogged just from like the alcohol that's in them and sometimes um, I personally have had them spray me directly in the eye um, which is not pleasant right so I feel like if it's one you're using on other people I feel better almost like using like the gentler mist or like an aerosol one um, or um, you need to always like spray it on your hand first if you are gonna use like one of the regular spritz ones just to make sure that it's not going to like come out in tiny droplets. It's going to either get in somebody's eye or sometimes it's almost like too wet. Um, so I personally, I do like to use an aerosol one. However, um, there are not always gonna be places for you to like be spraying a ton of aerosol backstage. So it is a good idea, I think, um, to maybe have one of each. Um, they both have their strengths and weaknesses. I just urge you if you do have um, one of the ones that like spritzes and you know that sometimes the spray gets a little bit weird before you spray it on yourself or someone else, spray it on your hand first. Um, make sure that you're not going to spray it in somebody's eye, but it's always a good idea. Um, if you can, add a setting spray. Um, I don't believe in hair spraying your face. I know some people do it. Um, but if you can get an actual setting spray, tons of people make setting sprays now. They're not super expensive. Um, I would always recommend that um, before I would recommend getting um, hairspray all over your face, right? So just kind of to like um, review what we did. So it's a little bit, a little bit 1940s and a little bit 1950s, right? Um, is either one going to be perfectly period? No. But a lot of times what we do in theater is we look at a time period, we do the research, um, and then we try to make it more realistic for what we're actually doing right um so for little things like this a lot of times like oh you can get like you know I can use a lot of like the neutral colors they would use great I can get a red lip um I can do the eyeliner style I can do this eyeliner style but am I gonna ask somebody to like shave off the end of their eyebrow so that they can have like a really angled eyebrow probably not are they gonna have time to cover their eyebrow every single night probably not um so there's like little bits and pieces that you do kind of have to like um let go of I feel like um and it's just important to not get too attached to like everything being perfect and exact because um I feel like in the world of theater that this is something we've probably all encountered at some point right um things are constantly changing um and you just kind of have to like roll with it and they might like one look one day and then hate it the next and you just have to change it um so it's a good idea to get as much background knowledge as you have um and as you can but it's also important to know how to like manipulate that and that's kind of where design comes in a little bit right so it's like I know like the basics for the 40s I know the basics for like the 50s and for like a more pinup look um and then I'm just going to tweak it to fit my own personal face or whatever face it is that I'm working on um and for the space that I am working in right um if I was going to be super far away from people, everything I have on would probably need to be even more intense. If I was just on, like, I feel like our, like, typical stage um, that most of us had in, like, high school or even, like, a lot of the ones we have at college, you know, not, like, a black box, just, like, a typical, like, big theater space, this would probably be fine. Maybe a little bit more intense shading, but most likely this would be enough. Um, if I was in, like, a black box theater and people were right next to me, um, maybe I wouldn't be doing, like, the cream contouring and the cream highlighting and stuff like that. So, you know, you just have to kind of, like take the information and take the research and kind of um, tweak it to fit uh, whatever space that you're working in. Um, so yeah, so I hope that um, this helps make the 40s and the 50s a little bit more clear for you all. Um, I know it's a little bit tricky because with a lot of the time periods, it's almost the same eye. Um, and I feel like a lot of the shows that I work on, um, it is a lot of the same makeup, but you can see, right, like there's like a little bit of difference between like the eyeliner on this eye versus the eyeliner on this eye. Um, don't want to get too close to this one because it's kind of scary and messed up. Um, but the idea of, is it, of it is there. Um, a red lip works for most things, I feel like, on stage, so that's an important thing to have uh, in your kit, I feel like, and just for actors to have too. Um, and yeah, so welcome to the 1940s.
the 1950s, y'all.